Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending uh, this webinar. Today, we're going to be talking about how to protect Dynamics 365 documents in SharePoint from misuse. So today, we're going to be discussing uh, the Microsoft Commercial Marketplace, and then I'll be handing over uh, the rest of the, the, the talk here to the Connected Software team so they can uh, discuss how to store the, uh, Dynamics 365 uh, files securely in SharePoint how that works, and there's some live demos. At the end, we're going to have a set of QAs. So let's start with uh, talking about the commercial marketplace. On the left side, we have here uh, the publishers. Um, the publishers, also known as the partners, are the companies or individuals who have solutions uh, for the cloud. Number one um, is that the, the partners and this, this, and this publisher will go into the partner center. And then uh, and the Partner Center is a portal that we created where we, uh, we can have all these partners manage their offering. We have different offerings in Partner Center. We have a SaaS, PaaS, you know, IIS, so Solution as a Service, Platform as a Service, in, uh, Infrastructure as a Services, in addition to actual uh, services, consultant services, and add-ins. All of that is controlled from the Partner Center. So that way, you know, Partner will have uh, a single control of everything that they are going to be offering to the customers. All of this gets uh, connected through the one catalog that then it gets exposed to the buyers. So these buyers um, have different ways to reach out the marketplace. Uh, one of them is uh, directly through uh, two different uh, stores that we have. So the first store that we have is a solution that will be used for the corporate user. Now, um, we have also in the field um, personnel that have also interaction with the market, uh, marketplaces, and they use the quote center. And then the, 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 third, the, the, the third piece is the cloud solution providers who use partner center to bundle all the offerings that publisher have put together and resell them to the customers. This could be first party or third party. Uh, is all uh, accessed through through that cloud solution provider. Now we have one catalog. That means that customers and publisher all have a deployment, a single deployment system uh, across the board, and we have uh, a single bill for for them to uh, to deal with the transactions. So it's one single bill for all the solution purchase on the marketplace. Now, so let's recap a little bit here. So we have organizations today that are increasingly adopting cloud marketplaces, and they're buying a lot of software to, to, for the clouds. We have the Microsoft Commercial Marketplace as a way and a single location to buy solutions and services, and in six commercial marketplaces where you can buy and try different solutions from these providers for you to use with your, in, within your company. And then to, to end here with the, this slide deck, is that you know as the cloud continues to evolve, there are a lot of different offer types, different scenarios that we continually keep improving and keep investing to have uh, all the offers and all the solutions provided to, to our customers. So uh, we have a quote here from Forrester where he said that 73% of business buyers find the were more convenient for purchasing. And now we're seeing more here where, um, you know, in, in, the, in the current uh, climate that we have, where by to 2023, 17% of all the business to business transactions will happen through e-commerce. And, you know, with the current situation, you know, we're, we're seeing a, a lot more increase since this, this poll was taken in 2019. So, you know, the cloud is here to stay. Everybody's using it. And uh, when you have some chance, uh, look into the app source and marketplace to see if there's a solution there that your company can, can use. So now I'm going to leave uh, the rest of the slide deck to the Connected Software team. So, Thomas, take it from here. Thank you very much, Julio. So, hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm happy here today to present um, our solution together with Microsoft to Microsoft customers and clients. So, um, the topic today is that we are having a solution which helps you to use your Dynamics 365 and the SharePoint to store the documents uh, secured against misusage. 
So first of all, Dynamics 365, I think you all know it, you have it, you love it. It helps you to run your business and it helps to run your marketing and it's a perfect integrated tool. So, and to work in a better or bigger process, you use a lot of documents and it makes sense to use SharePoint as a document management system and for the processes and projects um, together with Dynamics 365. You have a better control of documents, you have a greater document management system, and you have access to documents for non-CRM users, which might be interesting if you have a process which includes also non-Dynamics 365 users. And of course, Office 365 or Microsoft 365 is well known for perfect team collaboration, especially in these days. We have an out-of-the-box solution for Microsoft to integrate the documents into the SharePoint. But the problem, what is there, that the permissions and the access permissions are not automatically be, being replicated into the SharePoint. So sensitive documents could be exposed and unprotected and other users in SharePoint have access to them. So everyone can see everything. And this is how we came into place. In 2014, we were confronted with this and Microsoft asked us if our ConnectBridge software is such a magic thing what I try to tell them all the time and said, ah, can you solve this problem? And we said, yes, let's have a look. And in a couple of months, we, we build our prototype. And in the first year, we already start to sell it quite well. And we are very proud to say that we have a perfect solution to secure your documents in SharePoint, the documents you use in Dynamics 365. Currently, we can say that we are completely cover the whole entity security model of Dynamics 365. Uh, including security roles, cascading behavior, management by, uh, position based hierarchy, business unit hierarchy, access on templates and record of ownership. So this and much, much more is covered in our solution, external users, different mappings, multiple domains and so on. So how does that work? Very easy. We are a service running in a virtual machine in the Azure Marketplace or in the Azure App Store on a SaaS installation of ourselves, rebuilt in the Azure Marketplace. What we do is we read only via the APIs from Dynamics and from SharePoint. What we do is we have a little DLL inside Dynamics 365 who is waiting whenever you do something like upload a document, create a new account, if you promote someone, if you demote someone, or if you move someone's rights, we hear that and our Dynamics 365 to SharePoint permissions replicator immediately get this information. And here we calculate the permissions and overwrite it on SharePoint on folder level. So the whole solution is running independently. It's over APIs only. It's secured via SSL and we don't need the um, master admin password or credentials from SharePoint, but just a site admin for the place where the documents in Dynamics are handled. So, sounds like pretty easy, and that it is. And therefore, I want to show you now the live demo with my colleague Sharif. He will show you a live, simple uh, demo of the Connect Bridge Permissions Replicator and the SharePoint Structure Creator. Sure, please. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, welcome everyone to the live demo section of today's webinar. Uh, today I'm going to uh, show you live how to protect your Dynamics 365 documents in SharePoint from misuse. Uh, I will demo one of the many scenarios. We will see the problem and we'll see the solution. And uh, keep in your mind that the scenario which I'm going to show you today is one of the simplest scenarios that uh, we can achieve with the CP replicator for the sake of the demo. Um, we can see in front of us two windows on the CRM. Uh, on this side, on the left side, there is a sales manager, and the sales manager has uh, more privilege, of course. And on the right side, we have a salesperson, and this salesperson has less privilege on the CRM. Now, if the sales manager, for example, goes here and uh, creates a new account or use one of the accounts which we have there, um, Let's call this account, for example, uh, ADEX Tech. So we save that uh, account here. And if we go to uh, the documents of this 
I already have the integration between SharePoint and CRM in place. So I will upload one document here. Let's take this one, for example. Now, on this side for Alan, he can see the account, he can see the documents in CRM. And uh, if we go to the SharePoint site as well, now since he is the he is the owner of the account, he can also see the folder and he can see the documents inside. The question is, what about Veronica here? Now, if you go to the right side and we do uh, refresh, we will see that uh, she cannot see the account. Now, we would expect that if we go to the SharePoint, she will not be able to see the folder of that uh, account. But, however, this is not the case. So we can see here that she's able to see the folder. She's able to open the folder. And she can see the document. And she can, of course, do everything she wants to do with the document. And this is not correct. And this issue that we have here is due to the um, security gap that we have here and that the permissions are not replicated. Now, the good news is the CPU replicator, as Thomas mentioned in, in his presentation, solves this issue nicely, neatly, and behind the scenes. Uh, you saw the problem because uh, the replicator was not uh, working, so I stopped the replicator before the demo. And uh, as you can see here, the replicator has a nice web interface, and um, we can start the replication right away. Now, when the, uh, you start the replicator, it will do uh, smart steps at the beginning. So uh, as Thomas mentioned, we have a solution deployed in the CRM. So it will check for the solution at the beginning. It will check for the user mapping. It will check for permissions mapping. And it will do a lot of steps by itself and reducing all the work of the uh, product administrator and, uh, and the CRM administrator. All right. Now, we can see already that once I started the replication, that it already identified that there is something that needs to be secured, and in this case, this folder that we created here. Let's go back to the SharePoint uh, of Alan and Veronica and see what happened there. Now, if we refresh here, we see that the folder uh, disappeared from Veronica. That's because, of course, this is the right way. Since she is not uh, supposed to see the account, she's not supposed to see the documents or the folder related to this account. Um, very important to mention that your documents are secured even if the replicator is not working. So if the replicator was working and it's already secured uh, your documents and your folders, and for some reason it stopped or for some reason it can't reach your CRM or SharePoint, then all the documents and the folders that were secured will stay secured. So rest assured that this will be there. And when the replication starts, as you can see, it will identify what happened during this time, and it will start securing all the folders that need to be secured. Uh, the scenario which I'm using here is uh, using the security roles. However, so many scenarios can be uh, implemented and can be uh, satisfied with the replicator. If Alan here, for example, goes to that account that we created earlier and we click on share, and uh, we can add a user or we can add a team. In, in our scenario, we will add Veronica, the salesperson, and uh, we'll give her a uh, write and uh, delete access, and we click share. Now, again, uh, the replicator will identify that some changes happened. And you can see that right away, it's fine that there is, there is a new event. OK, now Veronica should have access right away to this folder, and the folder will be visible to her. I'm showing you this as to understand what is happening in the background. However, this is not something for the end users to interact with. The end users will uh, see that um, there is a folder become visible. Of course, here on the CRM, we see that you can see the account. And if we refresh here, we'll see that uh, the next entrance to this document library, she can see the folder and she can see the documents inside. All right, then, so we can see here that once the replicator identified that the Veronica should have access to this account, we can see that she can see the folder and also she can see the document inside. And as I mentioned, it's now this is how it's supposed to be because she is allowed and the, the account was shared with her. If 
uh, Veronica finished her work with the with the accounts and with the document or with the presentation, and uh, she doesn't need to have access anymore. Alan can go again to to his CRM. He can click on share and he can remove this sharing. And when that happens, in few seconds, uh, again the replicator will identify that this change need to be replicated. And again, the folder would be uh, hidden from here. So now she can't see the account in CRM. And if we go to the SharePoint, we'll see that it's not there anymore. And it was hidden from here. And um, once again, this is one of the simplest scenarios that we can show today in the demo uh, using the security roles of the users participating in this scenario. Good. Um, so that was the first part of the live demo. We saw how uh, the CP replicator works with the default integration. Now, as Thomas mentioned in his presentation, that it will come situations where you have a huge list of documents and folders uh, that you need to fit in one document library. Let's let's take account for example. Um, now we all know that after a certain limit, which is is uh, 5,000 for SharePoint Online and 50,000 for SharePoint On-Prem, uh, we start to have um, some performance issues, and also we hit the threshold of the number of unique permissions, since each item in the list has a unique permission. And to also meet this requirement, and to give you also a better understanding and better control over the uh, how the documents are saved in your SharePoint, we came up with an add-on which is called SharePoint Structure Creator. Right now, it's on the screen, uh, the controls for SharePoint Structure Creator. At the moment, it's inactive, and that's why my folder was created in the account document library. So, um, the settings of this, now you can either say, okay, I would like to distribute my folders across multiple document libraries based on dates and time. So you can say, okay, period. So this is how I'm going to distribute my folders. And I would I would choose from here, for example, months. So that means um, you will have a document library for each month. So if you upload a document to an account in or, or, or contact or any CRM record in, in May, then the document and the folder will be created in a document library in SharePoint called uh, May 2020. And uh, April, it will be April, uh, June, it will be June, and so on. And uh, you can have quarter, you can have it per year, you can have it custom. So you have multiple options under period. The second, second uh, way or the second algorithm is per record. And in this case, you can have a dedicated document library for each CRM record, in case, of course, you have uh, a huge uh, documents uh, and folders for one for one record. Uh, you can also choose the starting name characters, and and also this is one of the very interesting ways because uh, you can have, for example, a phone book like structure that you have a document library for all the. CRM records or accounts that starts by A, then by B, then by D, and so on. Or you can have the first three letters, and then you can have it like country-wise, or you can have it uh, city-wise, and so on. And also you have the, the record ID in CRM as also one of the ways to uh, distribute your documents. So there are multiple ways. Also, we have the customer script. In, in this case, the customer script gives you options, which is not listed here. But of course, it requires scripting. Um, some people say that, OK, we, we don't want to have the folder name created with the GUID of the record in CRM. This also option you can control from here. So you can have only uh, the record name as a folder name in, in SharePoint. So this option also is available for you. Uh, for today, we're going to use the period and the months as the algorithm, as one of the examples. And uh, let's go back here to the main control page and let's activate the SharePoint Structure Creator. Now you can see that I'm activating the, the SharePoint Structure Creator while the application is, is running. And, uh, and this is the point that you can, you can use the Structure Creator at any point of time that you'd like to, uh, to do so. 
If I go back again to Alan, is part in the CRM, and if we create a new account, let's call this account, for example, Aimstick. Now we are saving here the accounts by Alan. And if we go to uh, Documents, now at this moment, as you know, the, the document location is being created in SharePoint. And if, if, if I upload the document here, the so document is uploaded. If I go to the account library here, you'll see the integration. Where will my document will be? My document will be in a document library called account 2020.05, since the SharePoint structure creator was used. And there you have the folder. And as well, there you have the document which I uploaded there right now. And this is how the structure creator helps you to easily find your documents in SharePoint, to structure your, your SharePoint document libraries, and as well to avoid hitting the threshold of, of the unique permissions, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, you can see also Veronica's site. It doesn't matter where the folder would be created. If you are using default integration or if you are using SharePoint structure creator, she is not uh, able to see this uh, folder because she is not able to see that account. And if we share the account, again, the folder will be visible. And, um, and here we go. That's how the CPU replicator is able to um, breach this gap and uh, secure uh, your documents in, in SharePoint. The product has a lot of features and, and uh, a lot of uh, uh, things that, that you can do there with the configurations. Uh, and also it's easy to configure the product and easy to set it up and run it in a couple of uh, couple of minutes. Um, all right, so Thomas, I think that that will be my part. Um, heading back to you. So thank you very much, Sheriff. I think that was a first good impression. I just want to mention again, this is just the the, the tip of the iceberg. It's really a grown solution over the last six years meanwhile and we are every year have two to four new versions and try whenever there's something new for microsoft that we are even finishing the new solution before it's on the market um yeah shortly a summarizing of everything what we are showing you and important is it's a proven technology with more than 300 installations i give you an overview or some sample of customers we have and maybe some uh, referrals. It's a continuous development. There's in all plans free support for installation and configuration. Also for a trial, it's very important. We are a company which want to let you first touch and feel the software. So whenever you want to try, please go and ask for a trial. It's in all our versions available. We have a global support and local partner ecosystem. I will show you a little bit. Um, we can either some user mapping for external users. We have huge uh, server farms of SharePoint with a load balancer, with a no single point of failure concept. But this is for the very, very huge um, installation. Like we have, for example, the Department of Justice from Canada as a customer with a huge amount of documents. Uh, we have a uh, securitas group, we have a uh, uh, compass group and so on. So um, for some huge installations and huge is 5,000 and more users in Dynamics, we have add-ons and special things to make it super secure and um, run with, with huge amount of documents and users. So very important for us is as well that we have a quick deployment. So if you are interested, just go for a trial. You can install it in less than 30 minutes and, and start your testing. Uh, if you go to the Azure Marketplace, it's even pre-installed. You just need to connect to your CRM sandbox and to your SharePoint sandbox and press start and then it runs. So where can you deploy? As I said it already, we have everything on-prem. We have everything in SaaS and we have like hybrid um, versions. Um, and solutions, and of course, the Microsoft Online, online uh, Azure-based stuff we fully support. And not only the Dynamics 365 CE, but also customer service, field service, and all kind of SharePoints from 2010 to Office 369 and 2019. So, the benefits. Yeah, um, especially for the people from Europe, we are GDPR compliant. 
and I think it's even fast, nearly a, a must-have because you have to prove to the authorities that you are handling the access of your documents and that you know who has access to which kind of documents and this is the only solution where I think this is covered. We are very proud and happy that we are even certified for the United States federal government Azure Cloud and have the first customers there, which makes us proud. Um, yeah, the, the pricing is, is pretty adaptive. It's a reasonable pricing and we adapt it to your needs. There are one-time payments, there are rentals, there's SaaS offering. However you need it in your business, we, we cover it. Um, yeah, and important is that we are backward and forward compatible. Another possibility, which I think is pretty important, we can cover multiple tenants, multiple dynamics organizations. We are handling multiple SharePoint locations with this solution. Um, this is more for the bigger ones, again, but uh, it's important to know that. Later migration will not cause any additional cost. It's free of charge and supported. So this said, we say mostly it's a no risk, just fun. Have a try, go for it. We have a very fast uh, ROI with this solution. And we have customers, they went from the first contact to going live in 10 days. So, and not, not the smallest. We are happy about that. Um, what else do we have? We have, uh, we saw already a little bit of the SharePoint structure creator of, of Sheriff. Um, as we have more and more the big installations, they have the problem of these unique permissions, as you saw it right now, so I will not go too much into it. We also have the seamless attachment extractor, which takes out any kind of attachments from your uh, Dynamics 365. So either it is mails or it is uh, attachments in calendars, appointment notes. We take them out and our solution is the only one as far as we know. We do not take out or stop the file, take it, upload it out of your environment. Now we just can make your dynamics tell the SharePoint or the Azure block storage or Azure file storage um, where it should move the document. So the documents stay 100% under your control, especially for security and bigger public sector customer or finance industry. It's, I think, pretty important to have that. So another very unique thing is what we are offering, offering is a digital seal for SharePoint with blockchain technology. So we are, I think, one of the first companies in this world who can offer a possibility to seal your documents with a hash, which is then created uh, with a stamp in the blockchain. And you can verify that the document or a process or a file or whatever, or a process inside your CRM was never manipulated or adapted later on. And last but not least, everything is based on our Connect Bridge, which is the core technology. We are integration uh, and synchronization specialists with API know-how from many other products as well. We can connect from any software to Dynamics 365 online, any kind of Dynamics 365, not only CE or field service or anything, but also finance and operation and business central, and can help you so to move into the cloud easier and faster and keep your old software, which is still on-prem, or all the databases which need to be on-prem um, uh, synchronized with your web services, uh, with your web online solutions. So, short summary, we are our winning out-of-the-box solution in any kind of combination. You can, where can you get it? We mentioned it, AppSource. In the AppSource, we have our own SaaS uh, uh, offering, which is that the service runs on our servers. The servers are located in central US, uh, in Azure, of course. We offer it on the Azure marketplace. So you have your own solution, which is only yours and only you can access that. Um, we recommend that, especially for bigger ones. And here we have uh, two things. We have a fixed uh, offering from Microsoft, where Microsoft charge you per hour of the usage, which is very convenient. And we have the BYOL concept, bring your own license where you make the contract with us, but it is running on the Azure marketplace. Of course, we have an ecosystem of partners which can help you um, in the 
in the consulting, in the structure, in the additional things, if you are having not the know-how in-house. And of course, you can get it always from us. Um, yeah, some key numbers. We are deployed, meanwhile, on six continents. And thanks to Azure Marketplace, we are happy uh, that we have since, I think, last month, the first customer even in China. But uh, anywhere else, North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Australia, uh, and Asia, of course, we have installations. Um, meanwhile, more than 150,000 active users in more than 300 installations. We are five-time gold partner for Microsoft since 2004, committed to Microsoft and something about us. We are a small family-owned company. We have 40 people. We have two development hubs, one in Portugal, one in Slovakia. The headquarter is located in Vienna, in Austria. And we have a subsidiary in uh, Denver, Colorado. So we are a partner you can trust. The good thing of a family-owned company, we have no liabilities, no credits, we have no venture uh, inside, and we are uh, even crisis-prone and proven. Um, we offer our services worldwide. We have installations in the public sector in New Zealand. We have in Australia. We are proud that we are stuffing the, the state of uh, Singapore. We are in the Canadian government. We are, of course, in a couple of uh, states, uh, organizations in the United States. And we call us, in short, a kind of a post-corona company. So our business was uh, started in 2013-14 um, with a full digital chain of services. So the pre-sales, the marketing, the testing, everything is easily done globally because we don't need to be on the spot. We, we help you remotely and we're always at your side and are now pretty happy that we did that in the past. For the, these days, we are pretty well prepared. So very proud we are about our customers. As I said, we are not a huge company, but we have huge customers and we are proud that we are in parts of the biggest Dynamics 365 projects in the world. We are in a global rollout with Securitas, with more than 5,000 users, the Parliament of Canada, the Department of Justice, Department of Election, a couple of other departments in Canada. And Canada, I think, is the biggest customer of Dynamics with 400,000 licenses, and we hope we can do much more there. Infineon, German technology company, American Burns McDowell, Aeon uh, energy provider in, in the Europe, you know it might be advanced disposal in the United States, Kier in the uh, Great Britain, Met Office, public sector in the uh, UK, um, Spirit Aerosystem uh, in the US, Konica Minolta business systems in Europe. The city of Seattle is a customer of the 21st Century Fox. Otis is one of the biggest Dynamics projects right now in the world, which up to 10,000 of, of users, and we are on board with that, which makes us very, very happy. Yeah, you find more in our, in our decks, and if you're interested, please contact us. We have for sure something out of your branch and out of your uh, business, and we can help you with the ideas how the others are done that. So, as I said, we are very proud on our customer base. We have a churn rate from less than 1% with this solution, which says everything that people love it. We have here from Peter Luxando from Austria, ah, no, from Germany. It's a world market leader for tower cranes. We have Anthony Crook from the Compass Group, which is the 11th biggest employer in the world with more than 600,000 people. And we have here the manager uh, Raphael Sick from ZF Friedrichshafen, which is a, a one of the biggest automotive uh, suppliers in the world. Yeah, so we are collecting these kind of referrals and we're very proud to find more success stories on our web page. And that's it. Important is our partner network. We have around about 80 partners around the globe who can help you. I don't know where exactly you are right now, but you will hopefully find well-known partners who can help you um, and you can ask and you can talk to them and they can give you some 
feedback and help if you need that, or you come directly to us, or you go directly to Microsoft Azure Marketplace. So, and here we go. Where can you buy the Dynamics 365 to SharePoint Permissions Replicator on Azure Marketplace and App Source of Microsoft? You just go on the page, search the product name or connecting software. You can start your trial immediately and just go for it. You just connect it to your CRM and to your Dynamics, uh, to the SharePoint, and immediately you can start testing us. Of course, everything for free. If you need some help, we have very well documented solution, a manual, we have videos, and of course, we are here to help you with our support team. So, from my side, I am very happy that we are um, through the presentation now, and we are now um, offering you to ask questions. Depends on your settings. So, whatever your standard um, settings in your Dynamics privileges and permissions are, we cover exactly that. So that is the beauty of this solution. The user by itself, we showed it in the demo, Sheriff showed the simplest way that you give right access on a document level, but all other permissions, what you can put into Dynamics are fully covered. Um, that's a very good question. As I said, our SaaS is located in the United States. So the data of the documents by itself are not touched by us. We only take care about the permissions and overwrite it on the folder on the SharePoint. But we do not take the document or any information out of it. This is the SaaS. Every other thing, every other possibility to deploy it, either in Azure Marketplace or a self-deployed solution, the whole solution is strictly yours. We have no access to that. Um, that is some kind of security, what we had to do for big finance organization enterprises or for public sector, especially when it's about sensitive, sensitive data. We have no access beside you let us in with a screen sharing. Yes, if you have the rights to access the documents in SharePoint, you're able, if you allow that in SharePoint, to sync it with your OneDrive, that you can do it or you cannot allow that. Depends on your security rules and your security settings inside your company. If we have no other questions so far, I want to thank you very much for your time. Uh, we have a couple of resources. All this is recorded. You can, um, you can get it and download it on Microsoft. You can contact us. You can uh, get this um, under the resources and we are happy to answer you all questions and looking forward to help you. So thank you very much from Connecting Software and thank you for joining the webinar.